You might not know the name Blue Sky Software, but if you played the Sega Genesis in the late 80s and early 90s, you've probably played one of their games. Vector Man, Jurassic Park, and World Series Baseball are still considered some of the best games on the Sega Genesis and were developed by none other than Blue Sky Software. Who were Blue Sky Software and why did they fail to make it out of the 16-bit era? Let's find out on what happened to Blue Sky Software. Established in 1988, Blue Sky Software would begin developing video games for the Atari 7800, Atari's handheld system Lynx, Commodore 64, and Sega's Master System. While the Atari systems and Commodore 64 were falling off the radar in the late 80s, Sega was up and coming. Their development on the Master System would help them develop a relationship with Sega that would take the developer into Sega's newest console, the Genesis. The Genesis is where Blue Sky Software found their most success, leading to over a third of their games being developed for it. They would sign an exclusive deal with Sega and get to work right away. Their first game, A Port of Starflight, released in 1991 and included updated graphics and various other game improvements. The company would then focus on Techno Clash and Jurassic Park. Both games would release in 1993 and would receive mixed reviews. While Techno Clash would not sell very well and was called a poor man's gauntlet by Electronic Gaming Monthly, Jurassic Park on the other hand would sell more than 250,000 copies in its first week. Totally a record $13.8 million and would put the company on the map. After finishing Techno Clash and Jurassic Park, the company was trying to decide on their next game. They would first decide to use a technique where individual sprites were loosely tied together to form a single character. You generally see this type of sprite used by dragon enemies and snake bosses. Once they decided to use this design for a main character, one programmer, Carl Robler, came up with the idea of using sphere sprites in various sizes. The team loved this idea and the initial character design was well on its way. In order to develop the gameplay behind this new idea, they would take a couple days away from the office to brainstorm. The brainstorm sessions led to a futuristic game with robots that were fast paced and included multiple weapons. The creative director of Blue Sky Software, Dana Christensen, loved the idea and the game took off. The last piece of the game was the look of the main character. Rick Schmitz came up with a few different concept drawings and the team finally settled on what we know now as Vector Man. It would receive instant praise and Electronic Gaming Monthly and Game Pro would award it the best Genesis game of 1995. It would receive a sequel called Vector Man 2 and would also win Electronic Gaming Monthly Game of the Year award for 1996. The initial design for a third Vector Man to release for the Sega Saturn was completed, but Blue Sky Software's relationship with Sega ended before the proposal could be greenlit. Blue Sky Software also developed four World Series baseball games. The first of that series being titled by GamePro, arguably the best baseball cart ever. Another notable game for the company was Shadowrun, released in 1994. It would receive mixed reviews and like Jurassic Park, it is completely different from its Super Nintendo counterpart. Once Sega moved on from the Sega Genesis, they would cancel their contract with Blue Sky Software. They would develop a couple PS1 games in 1997 and 1999, but neither one would be successful. In 1998, Blue Sky Software would be acquired by Titus Interactive. You might know Titus Interactive because they created what could be called the worst game of all time, Superman 64. In 2000, six former Blue Sky employees would leave the company Company and form B Blank Software. They would create a demo for a new 3D Vector Man game. However, they never got the chance to present the title because Sega had already hired Canadian developer Pseudo Interactive to create a new Vector Man title, which was eventually cancelled. In 2001, Titus Interactive would close Blue Sky Software after they themselves got into financial trouble after developing a string of poorly designed games. Blue Sky Software had a great run for 12 years, however, with not being able to transition over to the 32-bit era successfully and poor leadership by Titus Interactive, they just couldn't survive. 
Thanks for joining me on what happened to Blue Sky Software. If I missed any key information about the company you feel should have been included in this video, please post in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to subscribe, click the notification bell, like the video, and follow me on social media. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.